Am I audible? Okay, there are some connection issues. Uh, so uh, today in this class, basically we'll discuss about the basic about the pavement materials. So uh, I will give you some rough idea about what we are going to study in this semester about this subject. Now the thing is that pavement material, uh, this portion or this subject contains some of the very basic things like uh, tests and other things and some of the things are there which are little bit complicated so uh, the thing is you know uh, about that online classes so in the online classes basically we will try to complete that basic things and if that physical classes uh, started in uh, coming future in that case we'll complete this in the physical classes if it happens otherwise we have to go uh, for this online classes only so basically for me also i don't like this online classes So basically this is the syllabus for your subject. I think uh, all of you have that syllabus. Uh, if you do not have, then I will share this in your group. So for the pavement material, uh, the thing is there are different units. So first is soil. So basically in this uh, portion soil, basically we'll discuss about the classification and characterization. So this classification, uh, some of the classification was already there in your previous semester. And in the characterization, now different properties has come up. So this, some of the, some of these things, characterizations would be new to you. But then evaluation of soil strength, there are shear test, severe test, plate load test and triaxial test. So severe test, all of you know about this. In the shear test, basically there are two tests, direct shear test and uh, triaxial test. So for the direct shear test and triaxial test, I don't know whether it have, uh, yeah, you have completed this test or have any idea about this test from your soil uh, mechanics classes or soil mechanics labs i don't know i don't have any idea so i'll enquire about this to you and about that plate load test basically whatever test was there like severe test your triaxial test your uh, direct shear test all these tests are laboratory test but the plate load test is basically in situ test in situ test means this uh, particular test is conducted in the field only okay so we'll discuss about these things so I think that plate load test and uh, your triaxial test, these are new in this semester. Now coming to the next portion, in the aggregate also, uh, source, these are uh, same as of the previous semester. Then characterization, so in the characterizations, basically uh, we have some new portions and uh, some new characteristics. Okay, these will be included over there. Now about the different tests on aggregate, crushing strength test, already you have completed this in the lab. Abrasion test, uh, that has not been completed, I think. Impact test completed, soundness test, uh, that remains. Shape test, that is basically flakiness and elongation index test. Then specific gravity and water absorption test, that you have completed. Stripping value test, uh, okay, I'll discuss this. Aggregate gradation, you know about that. Voids in aggregates, 
so this portion void cell aggregates that portion is basically new so we will have some discussion about how different voids in the aggregates will affect each the different properties or characteristics after that we have bitumen so basically in the bitumen whatever is there that portion is uh, very much uh, uh, from the previous semesters but some of the things are new like uh, your viscosity test and other things so here we will have a details idea about how from the indirect test of viscosity you will have that idea of the viscosity of the bitumen then this portion that bituminous mixes that portion is very much new to you and basically this portion is little bit little bit complicated portion so we'll discuss about this portion uh, if that physical classes opens or otherwise in the last we'll discuss this portion so basically in this portion there are different model based on the bituminous material so basically i will give some rough idea about these things so basically what happens your bitumen bitumen is a sticky material okay so this material has some viscosity that is a high viscous material as well as in a semi solid state it has some elastic properties also elastic properties means whenever you are uh, applying uh, stress over it then it will stress or its uh, length or dimension changes and after whenever you uh, uh, reduces that stress it will go back to its original positions so basically uh, that bituminous material basically exhibit that viscous properties as well as elastic properties for this reason it is called viscoelastic material now for the viscoelastic material there are different models that how you are going to mathematically represent that viscoelastic properties so basically that mathematical representations of the viscoelastic material is basically rheological model okay that is basically your rheological model now in that rheological model there are different type of models through which you can discuss about their mathematical properties there are two component models maxwell model kelvin models three component models more complicated models okay so these things we will discuss over there then there are linear viscoelasticity what is linear viscoelasticity how the properties are associated with the different uh, characteristics of the bitumen then time temperature superposition means basically what happens that bitumen is a material which is very much time susceptible or temperature susceptible so what happens whenever temperature changes with the some portion of the changes of the temperature that property of the bitumen changes that how it changes that is basically time temperature superpositions then selection of the optimum bitumen content that portion is very important optimum bitumen content means basically that portion is the mixed design of the bituminous material now suppose you are assigned to uh, build some road or other things in that case you have to mix the bitumen with a suitable proportion now the thing is if you mix more content quantity of the bitumen then whatever is needed in that case what will happen that that bitumen will be se segregated or bleeding will happen okay the stability of the mix will not be proper so in that case that bitumen portion should be optimum so that there would be enough bitumen for the mixing but there should not be more bitumen so that it can and flow out okay so there are different methods through which we can uh, find out the optimum bitumen content so basically in indian condition we followed marshall method marshall method of the mix design then we will have some numerical examples based on the marshall method then mix specification and stiffness modulus and fatigue performance of the bitumen then last portion is concept of super pave super pave means a superior pavement so how you will construct the super pave we will discuss this in this portion
Okay, so let us uh, discuss about our first chapter that is soil. I think it is visible to you, soil. Is it visible that uh, that chapter? Okay, now uh, if you go for the introduction of the soil, then how you can introduce the soil as a pavement material. So basically, soil act as a subgrade, subgrade for the pavement material that, that is basically subgrade portion. Now the thing is, this subgrade is as important as the foundation for a building. So, if foundation for a building is important, very important, in that case, soil as a subgrade material is very important for your road construction. So, basically what happens, whenever you are building some road, in that case, you build that road over the soil. Okay, so therefore, that properties of the soil, strength of the soil, it will affect the condition of the pavement. Okay, so there are different properties, different properties of the soil and basically that properties and other things of the soil are a little bit uh, tougher things. Why tougher things? Because you will understand all these things but, but for the soil what happens, these properties of the soil changes very rapidly and with addition of water, in some cases, the condition of the soil deteriorate and that whatever properties that was previously was there, it will change drastically. For example, uh, like black cotton soil. So for the black cotton soil, what happens? Whenever it is in dry condition, whenever it is in dry condition, in that case, that soil would be very much harder. Okay, it would be very hard. Okay, and in very arid areas, what happens that there would be some cracks over that soil. Okay, and it would be very hard. But whenever water is added with that black cotton soil, in that case, there would be huge volumetric changes in the in that soil particles. Okay, and it would be very much uh, softer than its previous state. So therefore, properties, knowing the properties of the soil is very important. Because after knowing the properties, you can treat that soil particle. And whenever you, you will have an idea about how to treat the soil particles, in that case only you can build a good pavement over that portion. So for this reason, that soil is very important. Now, there are different types of soil. So I'll not go through these things. So basically there are gravel uh, and the size is two, two millimeter or higher and sand. In the sand also, there are three uh, portions, coarse sand, medium sand and fine sand. Then there are silt, then coarse, medium and fine and their size designation is there and clay that is also three portions coarse medium and fine now if you go for the characterization basically i am not discussing this portion because this portion was already there in your previous semester so uh, all these things are very much easy you just, you just go through these things have some reading it will be very much easy so i'll directly go to the characterization of the soil material okay so in the characterization there are different properties and different parameters which are used for the characterizations of the soil so first one is resilient modulus 
Now, this resilient modulus or it is called MR value. Resilient modulus is very much important. So basically, you know about the elastic modulus for your concrete or your steel particles. So what is uh, elastic modulus? That is basically stress divided by strain. That is basically elastic modulus. Now, this resilient modulus is equivalent to the elastic modulus for the soil particles. Okay. Now, the thing is, you can directly find the elastic modulus from the UTM testing machine, but for the soil, that similar testing could not be done. There must be other type of testing through which we can find out that resilient modulus or elastic modulus properties of the soil particle. And that particular test is called basically triaxial test. Now, why it is called triaxial test? Basically, in the triaxial test, what happens? Suppose uh, this is your triaxial sample. So it would be uh, a rounded shape sample. Now in the inner sample, what happens? There would be water pressure from all the sides. Okay, from all the sides. This is called pore water pressure. And here it is denoted by sigma 3. Okay, and from the top, you will exert some additional pressure and that is called sigma 1. So basically that resilient modulus, it is determined by the applying a repetitive load to the sample in the triaxial cell. Now that repetitive load, whenever you are applying some repetitive load, that is basically, that triaxial is basically called dynamic triaxial. Now, why repetitive load is applied to find out the resilient modulus? That is also very important. Why? Because in the uh, pavement, what happens whenever a vehicle overcome a particular stress of the road, particular stress of a particular road in that case what happens that particular portion of that road will undergo with some stresses and other things okay and that stresses will eventually or our force our patient will eventually uh, uh, <coughs> transmitted to the soil layer now whenever that vehicle moves from that position in that case, what will happen? That loading condition will be withheld. There will be no loading conditions. So in the practical field, what happens? There would be a repetitive cycle of loading and unloading. Okay. So first loading, then unloading, then loading and unloading. Now to visualize this condition, okay, or to actuate these conditions, of the field conditions in the lab what happens you will go for the repetitive load of the triaxial testing machine that is dynamic triaxial test so in the dynamic triaxial test this resilient modulus is defined as the dipedric stress divided by recoverable strain now i will discuss about what is dipedric stress and what is recoverable strain Now, uh, do you have any idea about the uh, measure and minor principal stress? Do you know what is measure principal stress and what is minor principal stress? Uh, please answer me. Do you know about that? Principal playing, what is principal stress and other things?
So tell me whether you know about this or not. If not, in that case, I will discuss. Okay, so uh, basically in a stress body, if you consider about the uh, soil mass, suppose a particular soil unit, okay, of unit length and unit width and unit depth, in that case, any particular soil material, it is assumed that there must be three mutually perpendicular planes three mutually perpendicular planes which will uh, passes through a particular soil mass let me uh, give some example see suppose this is a particular soil material now it is assumed that there must be three planes three mutually perpendicular planes which will passes through that soil particle suppose that is y axis x axis and suppose another axis is there z axis Okay, now for the easiness of the calculation for the soil particles, it is assumed that there exist only there exist only two planes. Okay, there exist only two planes. So suppose that is a soil mass in that case. Basically, that would be plane. Okay, there would be two planes through, uh, through that soil particles will be there and these two planes would be basically perpendicular, mutually perpendicular to each other. Now, the assumption is in the, these two mutually perpendicular planes, there would be no shear stress okay there would be no shear stress there would be only axial stresses okay so based on the value of the stresses based on the value of the stresses the value the stress value which is higher suppose the stress value is higher over this plane in that case this plane is called major principal plane now if the stress value is high lower over here this is called minor principal plane so you remember that in the soil particles you assume two planes that would be mutually perpendicular planes where no shear stress would be there okay so one plane is called major principal plane based on the value of the stress and another plane is called minor principal plane okay now this measured principal stress measured principal stress is stresses applied on the measured principal plane that stress is basically your sigma one okay you just remember that stress is basically sigma 1. Whenever sigma 1 is there, basically this concept is from your Mohr circle concept. If you remember about that Mohr circle, basically this is about that Mohr circle things. Okay. So this is basically measured principal stress that is sigma 1 and that sigma 3 is minor principal stress. 
OK, and if you deduct sigma 3 from the sigma 1, that is sigma 1 minus sigma 3, that will give you deviatrix stresses. Is it clear what is uh, sigma 1, what is sigma 3? So you know about the deviatric stress. Basically, deviatric stress is the difference between the measured principal stress. See, it is written over there, measured principal stress and minor principal stress. So whatever I have discussed about that, why dynamic triaxial test is conducted, all these things are given in the details note so you just uh, go through this and another thing next question is your mr value is basically deviatric stress divided by recoverable strain so what is recoverable strain so as we have discussed already that in the pavement whenever you apply some load in that case there would be some strain strain means change in length divided by its original length. So basically strain represents the change, changes in volume. So basically that is your strain or changes in dimension. Basically that is your strain. Now, uh, whenever the stress condition is not there, in that case that some of the strain is recovered. Some of the strain is recovered means that portion or that portion of the pavement will go back to its original dimension okay up to some extent so that particular extent is basically the portion which will be recovered okay so basically that strain is basically called a recoverable strain okay that strain which would be recovered that is called a recoverable strain is it clear what is recoverable uh, strain Okay, so see for the triaxial, dynamic triaxial stress, here would be your deviatric stress and in the bottom portion, there would be strain. So whenever stress is applied, there would be strain. Strain means where strain would be there in the soil sample, there would be some strain. Okay, so there, as this is a dynamic triaxial test, therefore, this loading will not be fixed. Okay, it will... Uh, go as a cycle that loading and unloading so whenever unloading is there that particular portion of that strain or particular portion of that change in dimension will be recovered so that portion is basically called a recoverable strain so see for uh, from this so this is the initial curve so whenever stress is applied and stress is increased then strain is also increased so up to that point at that point just unloading phase start okay so as we discussed there will be loading phase and unloading phase so you have started that unloading phase so whenever you start that unloading phase then part of that uh, strain would be recovered okay so that is the next curve see the arrow it will meet over there so basically that portion e can be recovered and remaining this portion this portion cannot be recovered so that is f area that is permanent strain so whatever deformations was there then deformation would be there okay some portion of the deformation would be there so that is basically permanent strain and this portion which can be recovered 
that is called recoverable or resilient string okay so from the triaxial test you will get this curve and from that curve you have to find out what is the recoverable strain and from that recoverable strain you will get an idea of the mr value or resilient modulus value so basically if you discuss about the if you again uh, go for the summary of the resilient modulus what is resilient modulus Re resilient modulus is nothing but the elastic modulus properties of the soil okay and it is determined by the formula that is davitric stress divided by recoverable strain what is davitric stress it is the difference between major principal stress and minor principal stress in a triaxial assembly and what is recoverable strain the portion of the strain which would be recovered in a dynamic triaxial testing now in actual condition that uh, mr value is very much important but the thing is that conducting the triaxial test dynamic triaxial test is very much tiresome therefore what happens some scientists have found out some relationship with triaxial test dynamic triaxial test that is mr value with the cpr values so they found that if your uh, cpr value for a particular soil is lesser than five percent if it is lesser than five percent in that case its mr value would be 10 into cpr value and if the cpr value is more than five percent in that case the mr value would be 17.6 into whatever cpr value is there okay so the thing is suppose uh, you have a soil whose cpr value is four percent in that case your mr value would be 4 into 10 that is 40 and if your uh, cpr value suppose it is 6 in that case or 10 in that case your mr value would be if it is 10 10 into 17.6 that is 176 now another important parameter is there that is called modulus of subgrade reaction now what is modulus of subgrade reaction so basically it is uh, a particular parameter or particular constant value and this is found out using plate load test so as we have already discussed that plate load test is basically a in situ test in situ test means that test which we will conduct in the field only now this is defined as the pressure needed to cause unit displacement of the plate so in the plate load test there will be several plates of defined diameters defined di diameter means suppose there are 300 mm diameter plate or 700 mm diameter plate so over that plate you will apply some loading okay so whenever you apply some loading in that case there will be dial gauges attached with it okay now if dial gauges are attached with it and you apply some pressure over there in that case there would be some settlement now that modulus of subgrade reaction is defined as the pressure whatever pressure needed for the unit displacement of the plate that is from the dial gauge you will check when that dial gauge circles that uh, that indicator complete a full circle so whenever it completes the full circle then it is settlement is one millimeter and in that one millimeter what would be the pressure required okay that is pressure required for the unit displacement of the plate and this basically this modulus of subgrade reaction that is similar to the spring constant of the foundation now what is spring constant so the definition would be similar that is the pressure needed for the unit displacement of the spring that is spring constant so basically modulus of subgrade reaction is similar to the spring constant for the foundation then another parameter is poison ratio the poison ratio is defined as the lateral strain to the axial strain longitudinal strain caused by a load 
parallel to the axis along which your axial strain is measured. So basically in simple words, it is the ratio of lateral strain to the longitudinal strain, that is Poisson ratio. And uh, it is found that most of the pavement structure, the influence of Poisson ratio value is normally small. So for the flexible pavement, generally that, that Poisson ratio effect of the inf or influence of the Poisson ratio is very small. It is not like that your, your uh, concrete structure where, where that, that effect of the Poisson ratio would be higher. But in that case, in the soil case, it would be lower. This allows to use the typical constant values for analysis rather than the direct testing. So for this reason, as the effect of the Poisson ratio would be lower in that case, we will use some direct value for the Poisson ratio instead of testing for the material. Now the mu values or Poisson ratio values of the clay subgrade vary from 0 0.4 to 0 0.5. That is our constant value. So for this reason, first you need to identify the soil type. After identifying, you can assign the Poisson ratio value for the soil type and 0 0.5 is adopted for the wet condition. If it is dry, in that case, it would be between 0 0.4 to 0 0.5. And if it is a wet condition, in that case, you will adopt directly as 0 0.5. And the new values of the saturated clay and the sand can be taken as 0 0.5 and 0 0.35 respectively. Now, another important parameter is permeability. Now, permeability, uh, what is the definition of the permeability? So basically, it is the ease with which water can flow through the soil masses. Okay, so permeability to soil is the ease with which water can flow through it. And an idea of the permeability of the soil helps a designer to take into different things like subsurface drainage consideration and seepage flow. Okay, now as per the Darcy's law, I think you know about this formula, this uh, permeability, the definition of the permeability of that formula is given as Q equal to K into I into A. Where K, what is Q? Q is your discharge or quantity of the flow. So if Q increases, in that case, your permeability would be higher. That K is the permeability of the media what is the permeability of the media that is k i is the hydraulic gradient and a is the cross sectional area perpendicular to the direction of the flow that is the cross sectional area above the echo of air now hydraulic gradient i think you have some idea so let me discuss about what is hydraulic gradient so the hydraulic gradient is the change in total head divided the distance over which the changes occur. Now, if we go for the total head, what is total head? And what are the different types of heads which we will consider? And how hydraulic gradient helps in flowing the water? Let us discuss about these things. So, if we go for these uh, portions, in that case, Basically, there are three types of head when we consider about a aquifer or some well. So that heads are elevation head, pressure head, and velocity head. Now for the CPS analysis, velocity head means that velocity with which that water flows within the soil mass. Now that velocity is very much lower, in that case, there would be no considerable head difference for the velocity. So for the seepage analysis or permeability analysis, we basically ignore that velocity head. So we have two head, one head is pressure head and another head is elevation head. Now basically what is pressure head? Pressure head means, suppose one, uh, open uh, container is there in that container you put some water and you put some nozzle over that open-ended nozzle over that water in that case what will happen that water some portion of the water will come up through that nozzle 
in that case that portion which will increase or that water which will go up in that portion or in that pipe that portion is basically your pressure head so basically that head is caused because of the atmospheric pressure okay that is pressure head now what is elevation head suppose there are two or three wells which are spaced at a distance of 100 meter or 200 meter in a particular area okay now whatever what to know the uh, depth of this well or to know the head difference of that well you need to consider a particular datum level okay like your reduced level for your serving classes like that you will consider a datum level so basically that datum level that height of that water level from that datum level is basically called your elevation head so your total head is nothing but pressure head plus elevation head So for today we have completed our class. So I think this is clear to you. So if you have any confusion regarding any of the portion, you can ask me. Alfred, what is your roll number?
Okay, so uh, if you do not have any uh, confusion, in that case, you can leave. Uh, I have already uh, taken that attendance. We have already taken the attendance. Oh yes, I will send this PDF file. Okay, can you make one group for the paper and material subject? So you can do one thing, any of you uh, can ping me in the WhatsApp, I'll send you all the notes of this pavement material thing, okay, all these notes.